Uh, it's always difficult to talk after uh, Dr. Anju Singh, Yusman Singh, because uh, uh, I feel already fed, uh, fed up, no, so, ma so many information. And uh, I'm not talking something easy now, even for me, because there's such new information coming out in the last few months. I will talk about something that is uh, happening just in the last few months of research. This is very exciting, but also very difficult to integrate this new information. So please keep calm and study anatomy, okay? Now we'll talk about anatomy, okay? And we are talking about the cerebrospinal fluids, okay? Which is this uh, clear, colorless body fluid found in the brain and the spinal cord, which is totally about 125 milliliter. It's called, it looks like uh, spring water, that's what uh, uh, anatom anatomopathologists say. It's so clean, so it seems like fresh, good uh, spring water. And this is important because uh, after talking about all these toxins um, that we are facing, uh, how is possible that uh, so many different factors can give the same results, which means autism? Okay, we know that we have different kind of uh, symptoms and signs of autism, but in some way, so there is something that's very similar for each one. So we have to understand the pathophysiology of uh, autism. Uh, how Dr. Ruggiero told us yesterday, pathophysiology means that the way how this factor produces disease, produces symptoms, okay? And it's likely that something is happening exactly in this, uh, um, in this cerebrospinal fluid uh, balance. The volume of the brain of children with autism is higher than uh, uh, normal kids, uh, even the extra axial fluid. But how did they understand that someone was has autism or not? Uh, they were uh, studying at risk, children with risk of autism. They, are, uh, they were brothers of children with autism. You know that uh, if you have already a child with autism, you have a double risk to have uh, another autistic kid, okay? So they were studying children with risk of autism because already have a, a brother with, uh, and they did this uh, MRI when they were six months old. And they noticed that the children, brother of autistic kids who has a high level of uh, uh, fluids in the brain, they will become autistic. But brother of autistic kids that have low level of uh, fluids in the brain, they will not become autistic, okay? So they already knew, looking at the fMRI, that that kid would become autistic. Does it make sense? So, just to be more clear, what they so are uh, um, uh, state, stating that it's autism risks risk more, it's more in infants who have increased cerebrospinal fluid on MRI. So if we usually have diagnosis of autism around three, four years old, and we have no biological markers for predict autism, with the MRI imaging now, we can understand who will become autistic. So they kind of discover a new therapy for Alzheimer using product that increase the drainage of lymphatic system from the brain to the lymphonodes, okay? So how, how we can combine these two information? Now, if we cut the lymphatic system, we reduce inflammation. If we promote the lymphatic drainage, we reduce inflammation. It's difficult to, to say. But this is interesting to understand how reducing the, increasing the uh, outflow from the brain to the, uh, the rest of the body can reduce brain inflammation. Means that if we in some way uh, accelerate the flow in the, in the brain, we can reduce inflammation even in our children. 